Hey, what is up everyone? Today I want to talk with you about my new set of monitors. I've had them since August and um, yeah, I finally upgraded from an old hi-fi stereo which I've been mixing on for years and years since I started making music basically uh, and I thought it's finally time for some proper studio monitors. What have we got here? This is an Adam A3X and it's the smallest brother of the X series, which is a very reputated and beloved model of monitors. Oh man, oh, they smell so good. You know, they have like the typical gear smell. Yeah, anyway, yes, yeah, so why did I get such tiny speakers? This only has a 4.5 inch woofer, uh, although it's called A3X. Um, I don't know why, but yeah, it's 4.5 inch made of glass fiber. And then you have this very odd looking tweeter. And this tweeter is called X-Art by Adam, I think. And the thing is, this produces a very, very linear frequency spectrum because this goes up to 50,000 Hertz. I think most monitors go to around 35,000 Hertz. So you have to imagine your frequency curve being super linear towards 50K instead of being like, you know, something like this towards 35k. I'm not an expert with monitors and sound physics. I think that's a very easy way to explain this. Yeah, so to answer the question, why such small monitors, instead of choosing something from a different brand, which may have a bigger speaker for the same price? I thought it's not always about the size, it's about the quality. And I've only heard so many good things about Adam and it was kind of a dream of me to own Adam speakers one day because I thought they just, they look super fancy. I mean, I've been at music store a couple of times and I've tested the Adams and I thought they just had something so crisp to them and something very interesting in the sound. So being this tiny, it is particularly heavy, I would guess. So I've ordered these on Toman and these were B stock, so they were cheaper. So I got these for 460 euros instead of 500 euros for a pair, which I think is a fair price for what they can do, because if you're still thinking this is a lot of money for such a small speaker, get over it. Man, it's, it's, they are so good. Now, because they only go down to 60 hertz, I've had them for a week, just the pair, and I was really happy with how clear they sounded, but I was just missing that bottom end. I mean, fair enough, for, for such tiny speakers, 60 hertz, there are limits to, to physics of such tiny speakers. So a week later, I've got myself a subwoofer, also from Adam, and it's the Artist 7 subwoofer. So it's a seven inch subwoofer. I also bought this B-Stock. There is nothing to it except that the box has been opened once. I think I got it for 200 euros only, instead of 225. Saved some money as well there. Now again, I had the same thinking there. If I have such small monitors, it doesn't make any sense to go bonkers with I don't know, a 10 inch subwoofer. So I thought I'd just get, again, the smallest model from Adam. I did not want to mix up brands. I don't know, just wanted to keep it all Adam. Also really happy with that subwoofer because it's really clear and it's not boomy, it's not, it matches the A3 axis perfectly. And let's face it, I think most of you guys are also home or bedroom musicians, just like me as well. And for this size of room, this set is completely sufficient. I don't need volume to mix. I mean, th these can do volume, of course they can do volume, but for me it's about clarity and just enjoying a very good sound. I think that might be a reason why it took so long for me to make the step to real monitors instead of a stereo, hi-fi stereo, because they are made to make music not to just listen to music they would feel or just yeah they would feel rather boring because they have just a flat response and just they are being honest with your sound these ones they are honest they are clear but they are still very very exciting and i love just sitting at the computer and listen to music on those speakers. It's just a pleasure. Just by the way, what's really cool, the sub comes with a remote control. So you can just sit there and adjust the volume and blending frequency of your sub without 
you know, reaching at the back or something like that. There are still two rotary knobs at the front of the subwoofer, so it's really easy going. Easy going? No, I think that's for people. Anyway, so my blending frequency is around 60 hertz. That's right where the A3 axis stop working or can't do anything. So the sub just fills up from below. And that's, that's all you need, really. So, of course, these are not the cheapest monitors you can find. Maybe there are ones that are even better in the price-performance ratio. But I think, personally, these ones are very hard to beat in that ratio because, okay, it's, it's not cheap. I mean, 700, uh, something over 700 euros. So what you get for those 700 euros is just airgasms. I was kind of biased to buy Adams because I just always wanted to. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? Yeah, maybe we could talk about the placement. Let's do that. Yeah, so just to quickly show you how I've set them up. Um, as you can see, I have these foam pads, which you can get at Music Store or Toman, and they let you adjust the angle of your monitor. I mean, like this, it's flat, angle, some more angle. For my particular desk, this wasn't enough, so I've put these little pieces of wood here to get even more upwards angle. When I'm sitting here like this, without these pieces of wood, the sound just went towards my chest and not towards my ear. I mean, it's a bit of a temporary solution for me. Maybe I'll do a custom foamy thing. Ugh, yeah. When you're setting up monitors on your desk, the important thing is that you don't set them up like this or even like just like because like this they are I wouldn't say useless but they're not doing their job properly not only does this give you an angle but it also keeps the vibrations that might be created from the speaker from going into your desk and I don't know just creating frequencies uh, that you don't want also if you have such a small desk like I have setting them up, especially from that distance, like that uh, and like that, brings you nothing. Because the thing is, you want to create a triangle, an equally sided triangle. I don't know how you call that in English. This distance, let me, so, so the distance from my left ear to this speaker and from my right ear to this speaker, and as well as the distance between those speakers should be about the same. We're not talking about centimeters that should be completely correct. We're still in a home studio and not in a professional studio. It should be around the same length and the monitors are facing my head basically. So yeah and the sub is below my desk and I'm still not sure if this is the best solution especially because I don't have a lot of space um, behind my desk. What I fear is that the frequencies created by the sub underneath the desk will just, you know, rebounce and get muddy and all that shit. I might do some insulation like under my desk to prevent frequencies from rebouncing under here. I have the carpet on the floor already, which helps a lot, I think. But yeah, this could be a little improvement still. What you shouldn't do is just put your monitors right next to the wall or in front of the wall because that gives you unwanted reflections from the wall. If I put the desk back, I don't have any space anymore here. Yeah, it's kind of a compromise. You know, I still have those uh, foamy things on the wall, which kind of help. They could be, could be lower, but yeah. I mean, it's not perfect, but honestly, it sounds very good, especially with those things on the wall and a huge carpet. These are very, very helpful things and they don't cost much. I'm really happy with the acoustics in this room. It doesn't need to be anything professional, professional foam or something like that. A carpet, a couch just does the same job. You could discuss this a lot, but I mean, we are, we're the home studio, just bedroom level. Yeah, I can't stress it enough. I'm so happy with this set because it's A, it's fun to listen to music and B, they are very good tools to help you uh, make a better mix. Paired with my Audio-Technica headphones, it is a really good balance between, you know, mixing on headphones, checking if it's good on the headphones, and then just going back to uh, the monitors. Oh, by the way, how did I set them up or how did I, you know, connect them? I have a Focusrite 2i2 interface which has uh, jack outputs, so it goes 
jack to XLR into... Uh, is that right? So it goes from jack to XLR into the subwoofer and then from the subwoofer XLR to XLR into the speakers. Yeah, we are all balanced. Yeah, I think that is pretty much it. This video got way longer than I expected it to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was somewhat helpful for you guys. It's not really a comparison saying these monitors are way better than the other ones I tried because I, I didn't try many, just maybe at Music Store. I don't know, it just was an impulsive purchase and I'm super happy with my decision and that's all, that's all I can say to you. If you have that money and if you're looking for a very good home studio set of monitors paired with a sub, I think this is just the perfect setup. I think I'm, I'm happy for years now. Please like and share the video. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Take care and I'll see you next time.